Hello, detectives. Welcome to episode 12 of the Deception Detective Podcast. And this episode is actually a special one because we're going to be following up on a storyline that's a year old. So the second YouTube video I ever made was about this man, Hans Niemann, who is a professional chess player and was accused of cheating in a chess tournament. And one of the ways he was accused of cheating was using a device that you actually put into your anus and through vibrations, it informs you which move to make, right? So sophisticated, almost unbelievable uh, cheating allegations. And we analyzed his uh, denial video and I found it to be unreliable. So I made the prediction that he was in fact cheating. And uh, even though that was my second video, uh, it established the pattern I like to do of making a prediction based on statement analysis. Because when I make a prediction, uh, it actually can prove that the statement analysis works, right? So it's one thing to, to you know, give an analysis, but it's another thing to give an analysis and actually say, this is what will happen based on my analysis, right? So I think that's what makes the predictions powerful. Um, and as you know, I've, I, uh, I've made multiple predictions uh, in my YouTube videos, and some of them have come to fruition. For example, I predicted Liver King was taking steroids based on his denials, and I was proven correct. I predicted that Nadia was cheating on Warzone, and now she's apparently permabanned, proving that was correct. With Hans Neiman, uh, chess.com released a report about him basically saying that he was caught cheating in uh, on multiple occasions in tournaments. However, Hans Neiman has continued to deny it. So it's not as satisfying as having a confession. And that's why this will be interesting because this is a year on. Hans Neiman continues to deny, to deny that he cheated. But as far as I'm concerned, it's it's confirmed, right? It was another correct prediction based on uh, a denial that was unreliable, right? I was simply applying the statement analysis rules. Same way I did with Nadia, same way I did with Liver King. So we're going to look at this interview he did with Piers Morgan, um, analyze it, see if we can find any more proof that he cheated, right? see if his denials have improved at all ever since um, the denial he made a year ago. Also, as far as other predictions I've made, we're still waiting, right? So there's still plenty of storylines to follow up on. For example, I predicted that Russell Brand will be found guilty, you know, wh whether you like him or not, right? It's not like I am anti-Russell Brand, but I predict that he will be found guilty because of how weak his denial was, right? So the same weak denial that he gave is the same type of weak denials that uh, guilty people give. So I'm just simply applying the rules of statement analysis. Um, other ones are Andrew Tate, for example. I believe that the two victims that appeared on the Vice documentaries, documentaries about him were lying. So we're still waiting on that storyline. But if those women are continuing to press charges or, or if they're involved in the lawsuit, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating that he'll be found not guilty of any of the allegations that they have made. The way they speak is the way that hoaxers speak, right? So almost every video I've made, I've had some sort of prediction uh, based on my analysis. So Hans Niemann is particularly interesting to me because he's the second video I made. He has not given me the satisfaction of confessing to cheating so that I could you know, chalk this one up into my playlist of confirmed predictions. I've watched a few seconds of this just to make sure it's good. It looks like a great video. And as you know, Piers Morgan is a very good interviewer, whether you like him or not. So I'm, I'm anticipating a good um, interview with Hans Niemann. So let's dig in. Well, uh, considering the, the... Well, I'm joined now by Hans Niemann and by his lawyer, Terence Ovi. So first question, uh, Hans, for you. Why have you got your lawyer with you? And that's a great question. 
Now, that does someone having their lawyer with them on an interview mean that they're guilty? No, but it is um, unusual. Well, uh, considering the the recent uh, case and settlement, uh, some legal questions I'm, you know, my my lawyer might be able to better answer. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm, you know, uh, Terry and uh, his team has been frankly, you know, great in, in, in helping me resolve this case. And uh, I'm very, very thankful to them for believing in- Also, I think that Hans Neiman uh, filed a lawsuit against chess.com about their report. So he may have won that lawsuit. But as far as I'm concerned, I still think he's a cheater based on his denial. Um, so let's see if he can prove otherwise to us here. Thing in me. And, uh, you know, this is not just a, uh, he's not just my lawyer. He's, he's a friend, he's a confidant, and he's someone uh, who I trust uh, fully. And uh, uh, that's why he's here today. Okay, so look, you, you are a chess prodigy, no question. You're a grandmaster, which you got that title into 17. You rank the fourth best junior chess player in the world. So you're a brilliant chess player. The question mark that got put over your head came after you beat Norway's world champion, Magnus Carlsen. This is back in uh, Missouri in September 2022, so a year ago. Uh, and you beat him. So this was recorded, this interview was made yesterday. It is now September, so it's it's crazy how this has come full circle. Right, This was a second video I made almost a year ago to the day. Him ending so, it's, it's so amazing that I made these videos a year ago, and now the same people are popping up, right? Nadia got banned. Hans Niemann's back in the news. Liver King admits that he's back on steroids. All at the same time, the same time I came back to YouTube. Being a 53-game unbeaten streak. And uh, as a result, you were accused of being a cheat, and you were accused of cheating in a particularly uh, fascinating manner, which is the allegation was that your coach had basically uh, instructed you to insert anal beads inside yourself, which he would then send remote signals to. Uh, first of all, when that story broke, those allegations, what was your reaction? Well, obviously, it was very disheartening. Um... The anal beads aspect of this is why it went viral, right? Not the fact that someone cheated in chess, but the way that it was done the humiliation of it, the high tech um, aspect of it, the outlandishness. This is why it went, went viral and why it came to my attention and why I wanted to analyze it. Um, to be accused of cheating after, after that victory. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, these things, you know, uh, it, it happened uh, and I learned a lot from that time. And uh, it really has taught me a lot of very, very important lessons uh, about life and chess. And uh, I think it's only strengthened my resolve uh, and it's only motivated me, you know, further. And uh, it's, it's shown me that, um, you know, with, with the help of people like Terry, you know, in, in life, you know, it's, it's really important uh, to have people who help you. And that's why, because of this, I've started a, a scholarship where I'm giving away $10,000 to talented chess players throughout the world. So, so this is interesting. He was accused of cheating. And in response, he creates a scholarship for talented chess players. When someone uh, virtue signals like that, it doesn't always mean they're guilty, but it's a red flag. And by a red flag, I mean that further information is needed, right? That we need to continue investigating. So for example, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, um, who we looked at a few episodes ago, uh, ever since they did that apology for the letter they wrote for Danny Masterson, a bunch of stuff has come out about um, Ashton Kutcher kissing Mila Kunis when she was 14 years old on the set of that 70s show. And so, so all these allegations about some sort of inappropriateness sexually, are, you know, surrounding Ashton Kutcher. And then you learn that he's on the board of an anti-trafficking charity that he started. So that doesn't mean he's a bad guy, but that sort of over the top virtue signaling, it can belie a guilty conscience, right? So if someone starts a charity, uh, like an animal shelter, 
And then there's uh, some history miasma about them abusing animals in their past. It becomes clear, obviously, in 2020 hindsight, but it becomes clear that they may have done that to account for the sins of their past, right? So the fact that Hans is making a charity, um, a scholarship for chess players doesn't logically follow from being accused of cheating, right? But it could logically follow if he is a cheater and he's trying to uh, make up for for being a bad person and cheating in chess, and now he's trying to build up his name in the sport. Um, so it's not proof that he's guilty, but it is interesting when people virtue signal. It, it can belie uh, a the exact opposite. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when, when difficult things happen to you in life, you have to learn from them and you have to, uh, you know, uh, move forward uh, and, uh, you know, you can't live in the past. Okay, but just to be clear, you didn't cheat. Of course not. So what have you, what have you had to learn? All right, so here we go. So P Pierce asks him, you didn't cheat. And Hans Niemann replies, of course not. So uh, if you've seen my video on how to interview like a detective, it, this was actually a bad question from Pierce. It's bad for an interviewer when they're trying to actually catch someone off guard or collect information to ask a question that answers itself. So by saying you didn't cheat, it's easy for someone to pair it back. No, right? Because the no is built into the question. You didn't cheat, right? Whereas a better question would have been, did you cheat? And then we see if they stumble or they pause. Uh, you know, because lying is very difficult. Of course, saying the word no, if you've rehearsed it enough, is easy, right? So an actual better question from Pierce would have been, why did people think you cheat? Can you explain why people thought you cheated? And then we can sort of collect some information from Hans by the way he answers. You know, he might say, well, maybe they thought I was walking funny into the auditorium, right? And that might indicate, hey, you know, he, he is a little bit conscious about maybe having something up his uh, rectum, right? So starting off with an open-ended question is is better than this type of question where the answer is built in. Difficult things happen to you in life. You have to learn from them and you have to, uh, you know, uh, move forward uh, and, uh, you know, you can't live in the past. Okay, but just to be clear, you didn't cheat. Of course not. So what have you what have you had to learn if you didn't cheat? Well, uh, I think uh, that's a good question from Pierce, right? If you didn't cheat, wh why did you learn all these lessons, right? Usually, it's when you did something wrong that you say, "Hey, I learned something from this. Please forgive me." The learning experience was more so the media attacking me and uh, all the you know trust world you know crashing down on me uh, i think uh, learn you know dealing with that you know <laughs> was a learning experience you know dealing with all that pressure and competing under all that pressure but but again to be clear on the specific allegation have you ever used anal beads while playing chess not a question i ever thought i'd ask a guest to be honest but uh, well you know your curiosity is a bit concerning you know maybe you're personally interested but so it's interesting how Hans can't answer that question, right? If you've seen enough of my episodes, by now you should be able to detect a non-answer, right? A non-response. A non-response is when you ask someone a question and they respond to you with something that's true, right? Something that's not a lie, but it's not an answer to your question. So let's listen to this in real time. And this is something you should be able to pick up in real time. Right. If you're an attorney and you have someone on the stand, you have to be able to pick up non-responses in real time so you can object and rephrase your question. Right. And if, or if you're an employer and, you know, you're accusing an employee of something or, you know, some, you know or your kid is doing something and you're trying to catch them, you have to be able to detect non-responses in real time. Not a question I ever thought I'd ask a guest, to be honest, but. Be attacking me and. Uh all the, you know, trust world, you know, crashing down on me. Uh, I think, uh, learn, you know, dealing with that, you know, <laughs> was a learning experience, you know, dealing with all that pressure and competing under all that pressure. 
But, but again, to be clear, on the specific allegation, have you ever used anal beads while playing chess? All right, so that's the question. Have you ever used anal beads while playing chess? So it's a yes or no question. So it's reasonable to expect someone to say yes or no. So if Hans had never used anal beads, he could easily say no. And then he could make fun of Pierce for asking the question, right? Maybe this is something you're obsessed with or whatever, or go on the defensive. But a yes or no question demands a yes or no response. And nine times out of 10, if you ask a yes or no question and someone says something other than yes or no, right? So they skip that part of it and say something else. It's because they're being deceptive, right? They're lying by omission. They're trying to distract you from the fact that they didn't answer your question. Not a question I ever thought I'd ask a guest, to be honest, but. Uh, well, you know, your curiosity is a bit concerning, you know, maybe you're personally interested. But, right, uh... so Hans goes straight on to the defensive and mockery, but crucially, he did not say no. And this is one of the most basic rules of statement analysis. You do not hear what isn't said. He never said no. So it's still a possibility until he denies it, right? He can make fun of Pierce for asking the question all he wants. He can talk about how absurd it is. You know, do you think I would have really shoved something up my, uh, the back of my pants to win a game, right? You can make it sound ridiculous. You can uh, mock the questioner, right? Um, like Pierce, what's wrong with you? How could you ask that? So there's a bunch of things you can do, but until you deny it, it does not count as a denial, right? That's what's so important. And this is what a point um, I, I don't know if I made clear enough in the Russell Brand video. Russell Brand said the media is attacking me, right? Uh, they're coming after me. That can all be true, right? That could 100% be true. Do I trust the media myself? No, right? They've been proven wrong about so many things. But he didn't deny the allegations, right? So it does not count as a denial. Here, Hans mocks Pierce for asking the question, but he did not say no, right? So that's the important point here. If you're questioning someone yourself, don't let them get away with a non-response. Rephrase the question, pin them down to it. We've seen great examples of interviewers who did this. Uh, the mod in yesterday's episode from the speedrunner uh, speedrunning community who caught the cheater did a great job pinning him down. Um, the UFO congressman in the UFO podcast we did uh, with the UFO whistleblower did a great job of pinning that whistleblower down. Uh, I can tell you no. Okay, categoric no. Okay, so here we go. So Hans ends up saying no. Let's listen to that. Uh, well, you know, your curiosity is a bit concerning, you know. Maybe you're personally interested, but uh, I can tell you no. Okay, categoric. So let's see if you've learned some more advanced statement analysis now. I can tell you no. Does that mean no? Right, so did you, have you ever used anal beads to win a chess game? I can tell you no. Is that an answer or a non-response? I can tell you no can be true, right? The lawyer right next to him might have said, you can tell them no if they ask about anal beads. Okay, I can tell you no, right? So it's it's a true statement. I can tell you no. I've been given permission. I've been given permission to say no to that. But that's not the same thing as saying no. Right? No has to be said without any preface, preface or caveats. When someone's telling the truth, they don't need to add extra words to modify the statement. So I can tell you no is actually a non-response. In court, this wouldn't fly. Right? The lawyer would say, you can tell me no, but does that actually mean you have not used them or that someone's giving you permission to say no, right? So I can tell you no is a non-response. It's not a denial. So, so far, Hans has not denied using anal beads to win at chess. Now, from this little short thing, let's say we had this in isolation. Does that mean he's a liar? No, right? We need multiple signs of deception. Also, another question question people had in my original Hans Neiman video was, hey, this isn't Han English isn't Hans's first language. Does that affect anything? As long as someone is fluent in English, they have about a vocabulary of 20 to 30,000 English words, right? That's the average vocabulary of an English speaker. 
So they have to go into their personal dictionary and pick the words they're going to use. So we can analyze their statements, right? We are able to analyze Hans. All right, so, so far, I hope I made that clear that everything Hans said there was a non-response to Pierce's question. This is not a satisfactory denial. It's an unreliable denial. Categorically, no. Of course, yes, categorically, no. no, no I obviously, I didn't, I didn't make the allegation. All right, let's back up a bit. No, maybe you're personally interested, but uh, I can tell you no. Okay, categoric no. Of course, yes, categorically no. No, no I obviously, I didn't, I didn't make the allegation. All right, so here, Pierce, once again, is providing the response for Hans, right? So categoric no. And now it's easy for Hans to say, yeah, of course, it's categoric. No. So the fact that he said, of course, yes, is almost too persuasive, which is a little bit bizarre. But I'll let, you know, we can let that slide. Um, so, so far, it's an unreliable denial, right? We had Hans parroting responses that Pierce provided to him. But when it came down to yes or no questions, where Hans had to actually create an answer himself, he avoided giving a categoric no. The allegations, I'm just repeating what was put to you at the time. Uh, as a result of the furore that developed, um, you were investigated by chess.com. They banned you uh, while they did this. And they published a report uh, saying that you had likely cheated more than 100 times in online games. You then admitted you had cheated, I think, twice, you said, uh, in online games on chess.com when you were 12 and 16, but denied ever doing so in an in-person game. Is that an act? So this is also part of the Hans and Neiman story, is that he has admitted to cheating in the past, but his caveat is, I cheated in matches that didn't matter. But that's like someone saying, well, you know, I lie... I've been caught lying, but I would never lie to you about something important, right? I would never lie when there's actually money on the line. So if someone lies about non-important things and now you're giving them an incentive to lie, what do you think they'll do, right? They have an actual incentive to lie now to win and make money rather than just to win. So it's hard to believe when someone shows a pattern of lying that if you add extra incentives for them to lie, that magically they'll stop lying, right? So a good rule of thumb is if there's big rewards to be made, right? So there's huge incentives to lie and there's a low chance of getting caught, then you can almost count 99% of the time a liar will lie, right? Or a cheater will cheat. And that's why streamers, for example, when I look at streamers who are making a bunch of money, uh, Right, all the incentives are there to cheat. So that's why every streamer I see, big name streamer, I'm going into it a little bit suspicious that they might be a cheater, right? Because the incentives are very high, right? There's money to be made, sponsorships, um, attention, validation, and the chances of getting caught are minimal, right? Very small. Unless Bad Boy Beeman or uh, call of shame or one of these hacker hunters or, or Carl Jobs catches you on a technicality, it's very likely you'll you'll be able to pass under the radar as long as you don't do anything too egregious. So Hans Neiman has admitted to cheating in the past. So it puts me in the mindset that he might have cheated. And then the fact that he is unable to make clear denials, even now a year later, is why I'm 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 so convinced that he's guilty, but I can't say 100%, right? Because we don't have a confession or we don't have the smoking gun. And that's what was so satisfying about yesterday's video. We had a smoking gun. That must have been so satisfying for the people who caught that cheater. Accurate uh, assessment of what went down? That's correct. So I guess the obvious question from but that is, given you've admitted to cheating, is it completely outrageous that people thought you may have continued cheating? 
Well, let me just clarify that the chess.com report where they, you know, accused me of cheating over 100 games is, is completely defamatory. And, you know, as outlined in my lawsuit, uh, you know, uh, the person who actually wrote that report, uh, Danny Wrench, told me himself uh, that they knew that I had never cheated while streaming. And uh, the most serious accusations in that report happened while I was streaming live on Twitch. And the only reason that they banned me, uh, you know, was because they were finalizing, you know, a merger with the Play Magnus group and uh, their new, you know, s you Wow, know, I didn't even realize that he streamed on Twitch. So Hans Neiman isn't so dissimilar from the video game cheaters we look at, who I was just comparing him to, like Nadia and Swag and Zlaner. Right, the all the incent the same incentives are there for him, right? Twitch sponsorship, uh, you know, however people make money on Twitch, attention, the chances of getting caught are infinitesimal, especially in chess. Star ambassador was making a mockery of himself, and they need to back up his accusations and discredit me. So, chess.com. Chester report accusing me of 100 games of cheating is, is frankly ridiculous, and the timing that they decided. Right, so to now. Remember, when people are lying, they go into mockery. Like I said earlier, you know, they could talk about something so ridiculous, but they don't deny it. So let's listen to how we talked about this report. At any point, does he say the report was false? Because I don't think he said that. Right? He said he started a lawsuit. He said it was defamatory. He said it was... Uh, you know that the author admitted to him that that uh that the evidence was weak but he never said it was false that doesn't mean that he he cheated but it's still not a clear denial right it's always nice to have a denial when you want to root for someone so if you want to root for like russell brand for example wait for him to defend himself first wait for him to deny the accusations before you go in and help him that's another good rule of thumb, right? Don't defend people who won't defend themselves. So Hans is saying a lot of stuff about this report, but so far he hasn't categorically said it was wrong or false. Let's listen to that again. You know, uh, the person who actually wrote that report, uh, Danny Wrench, told me himself. Cheated more than 100 times in online games. You then admitted you had cheated, I think, twice, you said. Uh, in online games on chess.com when you were 12 and 16, but denied ever doing so in an in-person game. Is that an accurate uh, assessment of what went down? That's correct. So I guess the obvious question from but, that is... All right, so he said that's, record, or that's correct, that um, right, he admitted to cheating and said that he never cheated in an in-person game. That doesn't mean the facts are correct. It means what... What Pierce, when Pierce said that's what you say is correct, right? He's saying that's correct. Is given you've admitted to cheating, is it completely outrageous that people thought you may have continued cheating? Well, let me just clarify that the chess.com report where they, you know, accused me of cheating over 100 games is, is completely defamatory. So and listen, let's count all the things he says that are not um, categorical denials right so saying the report was false had lies was wrong those are all good denials so right now he's saying it's defamatory what something can be defamatory well in terms of the law right defamation is it, it has to be false right so de defamatory is is actually pretty strong that's that's good but i would still like to hear something like false or it was wrong because defamatory is a legal term, right? And you can sue someone for defamation as long as they can't prove that they are right, right? So you can wrongly sue someone. And, you know, as outlined in my lawsuit, uh, you know, uh, the person who actually wrote that report, uh, Danny Wrench, told me himself uh, that they knew that I had never cheated while streaming. Right, so he launched a lawsuit. He's suing them for defamation. The author said he knew it wasn't true. And uh, the most serious accusations in that report happened while I was streaming live on Twitch. And the only reason that they banned me, uh, you know, was because they were And the most serious allegations were while he was streaming. But none of those mean, what about the, the less serious accusations? 
you know, so none of these mean that this report was wrong. Realizing, you know, a merger with the Play Magnus Group and uh, their new, you know, s you know, star ambassador. Right, a conspiracy a theory about how he beat Carl Magnuson, so they wanted to humiliate Hans Niemann to build Hans, you know, uh, Magnuson back up. And just like Russell Brand, even if the conspiracy is true, even if Chess.com was rooting for Magnuson because he's the brand name of Chess, and you know, and Hans was an upset winner. That's not the same as saying the report was false or it was wrong. Defamatory is the closest he comes to saying it. And defamatory is, is not the same thing as saying false, right? Defamatory is a legal term. So it's, it's not the same. It's, it's almost using a vague term on purpose. It's kind of like when Russell Brand said, I refute these allegations. Why not just say the allegations are false? Why use the word refute? Because refute can mean, right, you're going to disprove them, which is good. But refute can also mean that you're defending against something. And you can defend against true things, right, if they hurt you. So when people use these vague legalistic terms or, you know, refute, it's defamatory. It's not the same thing as giving a categorical denial, right? What, what Pierce was asking for, like saying the report was false. The report was wrong. A mockery of himself and they need to back up his accusations and discredit me. So Chess.com Chess .com's report accusing me of 100 games of cheating is, is frankly ridiculous. And the timing that right. they- It's ridiculous. So mockery, but that's not the same as saying it was wrong. Got it to ban me. You know, only during this merger and only after uh, this accusation, you know, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and that report should not be taken seriously whatsoever. But you also, have... Pierce, it's important. See, I hope I'm being clear how, how he's denying the lie, right? If this report is correct, it's very hard to say it was wrong, right? Because you know it was correct. Lying is hard, especially on live TV when all your words are going to be picked apart like, by guys like me. So if you're actually innocent and the report was false, what, what, would, what would we expect him to say, right? You would expect him to say the report was false, the report was wrong, but none of those words came out of his mouth, right? We got a conspiracy theory. We got um, hearsay from the guy saying he knew it was false. We got excuses, but there was never a definitive statement saying it was false. Important to note that it was a 51 page hit piece. Right. And at the end of those 51 pages, there was no evidence whatsoever that he cheated online. That was the accusation. That was what they had banned him from. That was what Magnus had uh, stated. There was not a scintilla of evidence to support any okay. of that, and there still isn't. I understand. And but the fact that there was no evidence doesn't mean it was false, right? I could accuse OJ Simpson of murdering his wife. There's no evidence anymore, but I'm still right, right? OJ Simpson can say, you know, deception detective doesn't have any evidence. That's fine, right? I'm still right. It's still the truth. So even the lawyer is hedging his words, right? These are all lies by omission, right? They're all non-responsive. Yeah, but, but just to be clear, again, um, Hans. They're saying you... lots of things that sound good, but when you actually listen to what's being said, they're saying everything but what needs to be said. If the report was false, they need to, they can just say it was false, right? They're bending over backwards to not say a definitive um, defense against the report, right? It was false. It was fabricated. It was untrue. I'm innocent. All these things would be satisfactory. And these are all things that you can reasonably expect an innocent person to say. So sometimes in the comments, people say, you know, people have to word things just right for you to accept it. That's not true, right? The hurdle people have to get over is very low. And if they get over it, then that's it. Then I consider them uh, having defended themselves. For example, if Hans said that report was wrong, it was false, I'm innocent, that would be the end of the analysis. Or if Russell Brand said, I didn't do it, right? Those women are lying, that would be the end of that analysis. So the hurdle that people have to get over to s satisfy statement analysis is so low. That's why it's such a red flag when they can't clear that hurdle. 
or it's been a year now and Han still can't clear the most, the smallest of hurdles. And that's why I'm so convinced that he's a cheater. Who did cheat? The ones you've admitted to. What were the circumstances of the cheating? Well, I was 12 years old uh, in the... Uh, uh, I was very young. And by a cheater, I mean, we already know he's a cheater. Right? He's admitted to cheating in the past. But I mean cheating in his game with Carl Magnuson, whether he used anal bees or some other uh, method to cheat. That's what I'm saying when I, when I say he's a cheater. On that specific occasion, I believe he cheated. It, it was not, uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a tournament, but uh, it was a childish mistake and something I've admit to. And uh, I don't think that uh, something you do when you're 12 and something, you know, with, you know, a couple hundred bucks on the line uh, should have any, no, but you know, how did it's you, like how saying, did you, you know, cheat? As, well, you use a, a, a you know, a, a chess engine to, 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 to give you the moves. Well, you just, what, a computer or something? Uh, someone was, a, it was like an iPad. So someone was giving you moves from an iPad? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a, uh, it was a very childish thing. I had no, I didn't even understand the, the seriousness of, of what was happening. But then you were 16 12, and did it you know, again. So. Was it the same, the same thing again when you were 16? Well, when I, when I was 16, this was not a prize money event. These were random, meaningless games. It's like, you know, going yeah, but how to did play you you know, the Call of Duty. And you... It was the similar, similar manner. You see, so the first one you could put down to being a 12-year-old kid, all right, you make a mistake, you learn your lesson, you move on. But to do it again four years later when you're 16, it's only like four years ago, why did you do it again? Well, uh, you know, uh, it was a... I, I saw those views, those games as, as meaningless, um, and they were meaningless. There was no money. This or goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you're cheating over nothing, when incentives like money and fame and awards are added, is it's logically more likely that you would cheat for incentives if you're cheating for free. Or anything attached to them. And, as um, long as the likelihood of getting caught is still low, right? If the likelihood of getting caught shoots up, then it's unlikely that you'll cheat. But in chess, you know, if, if he actually had a device that he could stick inside himself, what are the chances that would get caught? You know, they're, they're tiny. That's not what they're looking for. Um, again, it was a childish mistake. I was living on my own when I was 16. Um, I was financially independent and uh, I felt a lot of pressure. You know, I just simply wanted to to uh, get a higher rating on on the website, but I want to make a differentiation, Pierce. When, when you when you talk about online chess and, and in-person chess, this is a very very different thing, and you need to understand the difference between that. These online games, th these are absolutely absolutely meaningless. And you know, some of the people who are accusing me, you know, uh, in these casual online games, you know, you know. Some people are, are streaming, you know, it's not, you know, you need to really well, understand I guess, look, here's the, the problem the, the I have with it, Hans. I, I don't like people that cheat in any form of competition or sport because to me, it just kills the integrity and purity of it. And I guess you would agree with that, right? No, of course. So, but you, know, you my, should understand, you know, the difference between when you're a you know, young child and, and you're under severe pressure and, and, and you make a mistake. And, you know, you should also understand that uh, when it comes to over the board official tournaments, I've never cheated. And there's absolutely no evidence that I've ever cheated. No, but we have, in, no, but here's the, the problem. So that was actually a good denial. I have never cheated in an over the board competition. So that was good. I wish he had said that in his first interview. Let's listen to that again. And, and, and you make a mistake. And, you know, you should also understand that uh, when it comes to over the board official tournaments, I've never cheated. And there's absolutely no evidence that I've ever cheated. No, but we have been, no, but here's the, the problem. Board. So that's a good denial. So as far as I'm concerned now, Hans Neiman has not cheated because he denied it. Let's keep listening. Board, here's you know, the problem with that. I, I, like I said, when you're 12, all right, I get it. But to do the same thing again when you're 16 shows there's a pattern. Well, and we only, we only actually have your word for it, right? I mean, there might not be hard evidence to have nailed you, but you can understand why people will be suspicious given your omissions. I mean, if I play with my village, if I play with my village friends at golf, 
there's a kind of integrity to the to the way we play, even though there's no money on the line. If one of them cheated at golf and I caught them, then I might give them a pass, although it would just be unthinkable they would do that. But if they did it again, I'd never play with them again. Pierce, we understand Hans was 16 years old. He made a mistake. We understand that you have a different uh, interpretation. He was playing online in a game that really didn't matter. At, at a so now Pierce is making the point I made earlier, right? Where if you're going to cheat over nothing, it's way more likely that you'll cheat when incentives have been added. So Hans did say, I have never cheated in an official over the board tournament. That and I, his competition with, with uh, Carl Magnuson was, in fact, an over the board official tournament. That is a good denial. And we're going to stay true to our word. I accept Hans Niemann's denial unless he says something that causes me to change my analysis. Same with Russell Brand, right? In my Russell Brand video, I said, I think he's guilty based on his inability to give a denial. However, if he says something in the future, like actually gives a good denial, then we can update our analysis accordingly. So let's listen to the rest of this and let's see if Hans Neiman uh, trips up, makes an admission, causes us to question that analysis. But right now he said the magic words. Now it is a year later, so he may have had time to practice that right? The same way Amber Heard was able to say some things in court that came off true. However, when she was questioned in cross-examination or was left to speak for too long, she contradicted that, right? So you can coach someone to act honest given enough time. And that might be why he has his lawyer there with him. But so far, we're going to stay true to the rules of statement analysis. We're going to accept his denial because it was a reliable denial. Now let's keep listening to see if anything causes us to change that analysis or question it. And Pierce Morgan it has his work cut out for him, right? Because we're relying on his interview uh, to let us to either uncover um, an embedded admission here that would cause us to question our acceptance of Hans Neiman's denial. So let's listen. At a young age, we understand and you're not wrong but to try to extrapolate from the fact of something that he did on an online game when he was 16 and say, once a cheater, always a cheater. If you did something when you were 16, I'm going to hold it against you for the rest of your life. We think that's a little harsh and it certainly doesn't properly characterize. Out of um, interest, all right, but tell me, why couldn't he answer that question? I think he was trying to. Well, no. Uh, well, he wasn't, you, you jumped in. Sorry. Yeah, Hans, I mean, it was really aimed at you. you. You understand my analogy, right? If people. You know, if you cheat in a sport once, well, well, well when you're I can young. understand, but well, let, let me comp let, well, we, I can give you an analogy as well. So let's say that you know, you know, you know, a 16 year old kid went into like a, a pickup basketball game. That is the equivalent of the games that I cheated in at 16 years old, is the equivalent of a meaningless pickup basketball game. So let's say in a pickup basketball game, you know, you know, you know, you did something. I don't know how that would, you know, mm. whatever, you know, you foul, you didn't call a foul or something like that. Let's say you, you know, did that in a pickup basketball game. Do you think that that should, should define my entire career? It's not especially, a foul, you though. Know, you're you're using, you're using, you know, computerized systems to... Well, some way of... To, okay, to, I understand To that. make but moves. Some way I mean, in cheating, chess, you know. I can't think of a more egregious way of cheating than doing that. You're using oh. a non-human brain oh. to beat a human. I mean, it's just... For, it's but he did not do that here. But he didn't. He did not do that here. Meaning, what he did back then, what he did uh, about five years ago, and then about ten years ago, you're correct. He, he's uh, he's admitted that and he's apologized for that. Yeah. But that has absolutely nothing to do with what happened here. It any nothing else could be closer to the truth. He played with integrity. He played with honesty, and he won that way. So you, yesterday, I believe uh, you played Vladimir Kramnik on Chess.com, uh, and you beat him. And Kramnik said afterwards, I've decided to stop playing on chess.com from tomorrow on. Just too many obvious cheaters on here. So the thing with Hans and Eamon is we have to separate the official over the board games and the online games. That's what it looks like. Because his reliable denial was limited to official over the board games, specifically his game with with uh, Carl Magnuson. And in that case, I now that he's denied it, I believe he did not cheat in that game. So we will give that to him.
right? He denied it properly. As far as cheating on chess.com though, he has bent over backwards not to deny those allegations, right? He talked about how the report or all these issues with the report that said that he cheated however many hundreds of times on chess.com, but he never said it was wrong. And so now I think that might be where our analysis is getting a little bit muddled. I'm convinced he's a cheater, but it may be that he's only a cheater online where the stakes are low and he's not going to get caught. So let's listen to what this guy said, because this was a chess.com tournament. Nick on chess.com uh, and you beat him. And Kramnik said, said afterwards, I've decided to stop playing on chess.com from tomorrow on. Just too many obvious cheaters on here. Nothing is done. This is all, also why this podcast format is so fun, because I go into each video and I don't know how it's going to end up, right? Because we're analyzing on the fly. So my old videos were heavily edited, right? So I, I did deep dives into the minutia of the words. I presented it like a, like a lesson. This one, we're listening together and um, we're just following the rules of statement analysis, which, which has served me so well so far, right? So we're going to stick to the rules. So he denied the Magnus Carlson or Carl Magnuson. I always get that mixed up. The Magnus allegation, I don't think he cheated in that match now, right? So I've updated my analysis. But as far as chess.com goes, we've still seen an inability to deny cheating. And even his denial, right, he he went to the lengths of, of limiting it to uh, over-the-board official games, right? So he deliberately left out chess.com matches, which occur from the computer, right? They're not official over-the-board games. To clean the platform from these small crooks. Harsh words, but true. What did, what did you make of that? Well, the Kremnik situation is quite complex because I actually beat him about a week ago and uh, he made a video that was a bit confusing. But um, actually, a couple of days ago, I had private correspondence with him where he told me that he has personally has no issue with me and where he said that uh, he it was not meant to be an accusation whatsoever. So, uh, what was it supposed I don't to be? I mean, that couldn't that's it it to couldn't me. have been a more blatant suggestion well, that you cheated again. Well, that's, could that, it? That, well, that contradicts, uh, you know, the, the direct, you know, the, the private. So rather than relying on evidence of what this guy told him, right, an innocent person, this is something that, uh, you know, I, I, I should say more often, right? Innocent people declare their innocence immediately and clearly, right? And a good example is, like I say, if, you know, if someone accuses you of stealing their lunch, you don't say, well, you know, this other guy said that I really don't steal lunches, right? So how could I have stolen it, right? You would say, I didn't steal your lunch, right? Immediately and clearly. You wouldn't say, you know, like you stole my lunch. You wouldn't say, okay, let me get back to you about that, about that missing lunch, right? That That is a red flag. So here, Carl's being accused of having cheated in chess.com against this this guy last week. And instead of saying, I didn't cheat when I played him, he's providing other evidence, right? So he's not declaring his innocence. And even if he does now, it's not immediate, right? It'll have been almost an afterthought to, for it to occur to him to say, hey, actually, I didn't cheat. Respondents, an email that he sent to me. And but why would I, he, he actually you, Why would he me. infer you're a cheat in public in the way that he did? That was yesterday. Well, he, inv he, but he, he, it's, he, my name was never mentioned. You know, he's he just, accused he just a lot of people of cheating. He's accused, yeah, but he's, he's, he played it. And the reason it's not occurring to him to say, hey, I don't know why he said that, you know, but I didn't cheat is because that's what an innocent person would say, right? So a guilty person, things like saying, I didn't cheat or I'll prove I didn't cheat don't even occur to them because they're not true. So they don't have the memory of it to rely on. So uh, the fact that he's not saying, well, I didn't cheat against him, so I don't know why he said that. It's not occurring to him, which is a sign that he probably did cheat. That same day, he played against, you know, 10 other people. Right. And considering that I was invited by him to Amsterdam to meet him and to play games with him, um, it seems a bit weird uh, that, you know, uh, that he would do that, you know, and then the next day supposedly accused me of cheating. So 
you know, I understand that how it might look, but uh, you know, he's privately reached out to me and I was invited to Amsterdam. I unfortunately can't go um, due to another conflict, but uh, I hope to meet him and to discuss things in more detail with him. Okay, you sued um, Magnus Carlsen. Isn't that Carlson. the real damage of this also, Pierce? Isn't that the real damage as well? So whenever now someone beats someone, rather than acknowledge it and say that I'll get better, now this has set a precedent that whenever someone beats you, well, yes, instead of trying to make yourself better, you try to take it away from them. Yes, but unfortunately, actions have consequences. If you admit you've cheated twice over a four-year period, uh, and you become a grand master the year after the second time, and you're now only 20 now, people are going to obviously cast aspersions. Well, why, they, Pierce is exactly correct. If Hans did not have a history of cheating, we wouldn't be parsing his words so carefully in his original denial, right? It's because he has a history of cheating. And he thinks it helps him by saying, well, I cheated when it didn't matter. That doesn't help him, right? Because... If you cheat when it doesn't matter, as long as you're not going to get caught, like playing a chess.com match, right, where it's unlikely they'll ever catch you because you're at your house in your pajamas playing with no one watching you. As long as you have incentives and you're unlikely to get caught and you have a history of cheating, it's very likely that you're going to cheat when incentives are added. So now they're trying to play the victim card, and I'm glad Pierce isn't letting them get away with it. I, well, why do you focus on those two isolated incidents? Why don't you focus on well, all the hundreds two he's of matches to. that he's won? They're the two your clients admitted oh, to. Of course, but the other, the, the other hundreds of matches that he's won, are those totally meaningless? So you can always focus on the shade. I don't know. I don't know. I can well. only... The majority... I'm not judging your client. I'm just saying he's admitted to cheating twice over a four-year period, and that's why maybe people are... In meaningless games, you know. I mean, people do wonder, you're, how you're did correct. you We're beat... Not... They do wonder, how did you beat Magnus Carlsen? Um, okay, well, if you want to take that logic, you know, you want to take that logic, right? So I have proven my strength, right? Chess.com themselves have said that since I, you know, since they gave me a short ban before, they said that since then I have never cheated. Mm. So on their website, I have beaten some of the best players in the world. Right, see, Chess.com says he's never cheated. He hasn't said he's never cheated on Chess.com. When he said that great denial, I have never cheated, he added the caveat over the board um, in an official tournament. Right, That was deliberate. I've performed at the highest level on their website, which they, they themselves say that I, I didn't cheat in. In addition to that, in over the board tournaments, I have continued to play chess at a very, very high level. I have, you know, you know my ranking, I, my ranking did not just drop. I continued to play well even after this victory. I have proven my my chess level and my chess strength time and time again. This is simply a case of of you know where bullies are are, are, are you know going after someone because they threaten their business interests. So you, know, you should be looking at bully. the fact that of course he's a bully. He used his entire empire. He used his connections to Chess.com. He leveraged his you know the fact that there's a you know a, a merger happening, and he got all these people to attack me. And it was, it's a bully. It's a simple thing. But, you know, I don't, you know, let people bully me. I'm going to stand up to him. And I stood up to him. And, you know, I look forward to competing this him. This is another the thing I've, I've been talking about more and more lately because I see so much of it is uh, you have to escape binary thinking. So Magnus Carlsen is a bully. Does that mean Hans Niemann didn't cheat? Is there a logical connection? No. Right, they can both be true. Magnus can be a bully, who was incentivized to say that Hans cheated and publicize it to help his merger, and Hans can at the same time be a cheater who cheated in that match. Right, they're not mutually exclusive, and this harkens back to to Russell Brand again. Can it be true that Russell Brand is guilty of the sexual assaults he's accused of? And can it be true that the media is on a witch hunt to get him and that they're biased and that they're liars? Yes, right? Both can be true. They're not mutually exclusive. So be careful when people try to dog whistle um, about partisan things, right? Like, well, they're on the left and we're on the right and or we're on the right and they're on the left. So we have to stick together and they're the bad guys and we're the good guys. You have to escape that binary thinking, right? Both can be bad. And another great example of this that I, I tweeted about on X 
was Logan Paul and Dylan Danis, right? They're doing a boxing match. Is the fact that Logan Paul's unlikable, does that make Dylan Danis likable? No, right? They can both be bad. So here, and and so many people fall into this trap of binary thinking, right? Where if they're convinced that Magnus is a bully, now Hans Niemann is an angel, right? And they're going to side with him. It doesn't have to be like that. Both can be wrong, right? Both can be wrong. Both can be right. You have to determine yourself. It's, it's you're no, You have to avoid letting a side dictate what you believe, right? So we're against them, then I'm with you, right? That it's the wrong thinking. You have to be an individual. Um, like, for example, even myself, right? I'm going against my old video. From a year ago, I said that Hans Neiman cheated uh, in his match with Ma Magnus. Now, I don't believe that's true anymore. Hans um, denied it. But I still think Hans is a cheater on chess.com. And if he ever denies that, then I'll update my my uh, analysis accordingly. But so far, he's studiously stepped around saying that he's never cheated on chess.com. Right. So now he's getting into this conspiracy theory, right? As as evidence that he's never cheated on chess.com, right? Hans is a bully, so I've never cheated on chess.com. They're not mutually exclusive. They can both be true. That's the board again, and uh, you know I'm, I'm going to you know do what I do best and, and, and prove myself. Are you still time suing him? Again. Are you still suing him for a hundred million dollars? No. You dropped that. The case has been resolved, Pierce. Yeah. Did, did he? Correct. Did, did he pay any money? Or we can't discuss that. Okay. Out of interest, how do you how do you disprove that you've used anal beads to cheat? I mean, how, how could I, you know, prove a, disprove a negative? It's it's like, well, no, you know, how, how do you expect me? But 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 let's first of all discuss that. You know, that is not a serious theory. Okay, that was something that was taken out of context, and that was that was never a, a serious thing. That was something that the media caught up. But that was, you know, if you if you look at the the consensus among chess players, the consensus among experts, it is an unequivocal fact that I have never cheated in an over the board game. So I find, you know, yeah, but, uh, you know, once again, that caveat, I've never cheated in an over the board game. That's a reliable denial, right? It meets all the criteria of denial. He was asked is, if he's ever cheated and that's what he said. So it leaves open the, the admissions that he cheated on chess.com and it leaves open the possibility that he continues to cheat on chess.com, right? So it's a reliable denial, but it does not exonerate him from cheating on chess.com. And so far he's given multiple signs that he's avoiding denying having cheated on chess.com, right? So right now we know he can give a denial, but he has chosen not to give a denial about cheating on chess.com, right? So anyone with the comments saying that, well, English isn't his first language, so we can't expect him to give a denial. He gave a perfect denial, right? He gave such a good denial, I changed my opinion on him. So he that means he has studiously avoided giving a denial about cheating on chess.com. Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah, but Hans, I'm just wondering, how do you disprove it? I mean, were you strip searched? Did they explore cavities? Where, where do we go here? Well, through tournaments, there are security checks where they, you know, will do, you know, various security checks, you know, metal detectors, different scanners. Um, Would that pick up anal so beads? You know? they, I don't know, Pierce. So I, I have no. I'm genuinely curious. I, I think at this point, Pierce is trying to get Hans to walk off the interview. Right. <laughs> I think Pierce is trying to get a, a viral moment here by pressing him on the anal beads. You should no invite idea. them I'm on not, your I'm show. Not. You should you should invite them on your show and ask them that. It appears that. That's the main topic of your curiosity, right. Pierce. And Hans's lawyer is doing a good job, right? Escape binary thinking. Can Pierce be a jerk? Yes. And can Hans be a cheater? Yes, right? Hans being a cheater doesn't mean Pierce is the good guy. So the, the Pierce uh, appears to be um, trying to get a moment here, trying to get Hans to storm off, which is funny. Appears to be that, as opposed to the fact that you have a 19-year-old champion who defeated a champion, who defeated the whole world of chess in the largest cyberbullying case in history, the world of chess versus Hans Niemann, and he's here to talk about it, and he's still a victor, 
And instead of becoming bitter, he became better. And you want to ask him about the anal bead, something he never said or never did? We don't know the answer to that question, Pierce. Maybe you can ask the anal bead people. Have them on your show right. and they can- So Hans's lawyer is actually doing a great job of, of, uh, of getting Pierce to drop the bullying. So good on him. Explain it to you better. I think I will. It's, it's actually a fast. I mean, I, listen, I love chess. I was my school, my prep school you chess champion. You seem to champion. love anal beads better, Pierce. Well, I was my prep school chess champion. I never cheated, right? So we have that. Uh, we're different, right? I Until did, somebody I was, says that you did. Until somebody says no, that no, you did. No, no, I was chess champion at age 12. Hans actually, never the cheated same either. age that your client cheated, I didn't cheat. Never crossed my mind. Would never have cheated at, at chess. You're a better person. You're a better person. You, your words, not mine, Terence. Uh, but I'm just yes. I'm genuinely curious. It was a massive story, as you know. It's why you're famous outside of uh, the chess world. It's because there was this allegation made, and it was fueled by the world champion who couldn't understand how in normal circumstances you would beat him. Uh, and then came Mrs. Uh, well, he's lost to many people of my same ranking many times. So this idea that it's a statistical anomaly, he can lose one game. Mm. And, and that's the issue, right? He lost to people similar age, similar rating, multiple times recently. So me beating him in a singular game is not a statistical anomaly, right? You know, chess, a lot of the top players are very, very good, and there's slim, slim margins. So anything can happen in one game. And, you know, considering my recent rise, I, I, you know, it's uh, you know, it's not. The other thing about um, Hans, you know, now that he's actually given a good denial about his match with Magnus, is here where he's... Um, you know, talking about statistics of winning, which might otherwise seem like um, unnecessary persuasion, is actually appropriate. Right? As I said, um, I think uh, one or two videos ago, if you give unnecessary persuasion unprompted, right? So if I say, did you steal my lunch? And if, if I think someone stole my lunch, I say, hey, did you steal my lunch? And someone goes, Oh, me? That's ridiculous. How could I steal your lunch? I was out smoking. It. That's a red flag. But if I ask them every day, did you steal my lunch? Did you steal my lunch? Did you steal my lunch? And then they say, look, statistically, there's no way I stole your lunch because I was out of work. You know, I wasn't in the office this morning or whatever. So if they do something that seems like it's over the top persuasive, but they're doing it in response to multiple accusations, so they're exasperated from accusations, then it's appropriate. So the fact that Hans has moved past saying, hey, I'm innocent um, with the Hans knee, with uh, my match with Magnus Carlsen, and now he's talking about statistics, is actually appropriate, right? It's been a year that he's been accused of this. So um, more and more, I'm convinced that he did not cheat in his match with, uh, with Magnus Carlsen. However, I cannot say the same for him cheating on chess.com because he hasn't denied that himself, right? He made sure to add the caveat about over the board matches every time he talked about never having cheated. So this is actually a more interesting analysis than I thought, right? We, I thought this saga was going to be closed out in this video the same way we, we seem to have closed out the Nadia saga. But uh, this one seems to continue going. I don't think we've seen the end of this. It's not going to be the last time that I beat him. He hasn't agreed to play you, as I understand it. Is he? Is he? Is he chickening out? What's the deal there? No, he has agreed to play me. He put out a public statement that he he will play. Right, but there's me. no date, right? So, well, when it, when we are matched in a tournament, uh, which which is inevitable uh, um. so for the first time ever i will probably watch a chess match if they play simply because i'm fascinated by by this story so if they do play again and hans wins that will be a huge victory for him and um be some more evidence that that his denial was was uh, true uh, uh we will play and will you allow yourself to be strip searched just to rule out any rumors? I find that question to be just, you know, I can't take you seriously when you ask those questions, Pierce. I'm sorry. Because you're, you're entertaining, uh, 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 honestly, an allegation that should, should not even be taken seriously. Because it's, it's purely, you know, for, you know, for you to get media attention when this, when this is it's not even a serious thing. How can, how can you, as a reporter, take that 
allegation seriously at all. Well, right. And Hans is right here. This is so many similarities to that recent Russell Brand case. Is the media sleazy? Is Pierce being sleazy and disingenuous? Yes. Right. He's trying to talk about the anal beads because he knows that will get people to watch this interview. Or he's trying to get Hans to walk off the interview. But that doesn't mean Hans is an angel. I still believe Hans cheats on chess.com because he has not denied cheating on chess.com. Right. So it all boils down to language analysis. I'm not reading his body language. I don't know anything about his history besides the basic stuff he talked about in that first interview I watched of him. I haven't followed his story. Right. I've, I've maybe seen some stuff about him on Twitter. Um, so I'm basing my analysis on his language. And I'm basing my analysis of Pierce on his language, right? Is he being genuine? No, right? He's trying to bully Hans into saying something humiliating or walking off the show. Well, I mean, listen, Elon Musk. Uh, no, but owns... I know. Do you genuinely believe that? No, but do you, do you, I know. you, know, do you actually I, believe that that, I, that is the case? I don't know. Could you, could you even I fathom don't know. a world I don't know. Where, I know you're is... capable of cheating because you've admitted it. I don't know how far you go. You cheated twice in a four-year well, period. I've never cheated in an over-the-board game. I've never. Well, I'm clearly not. I'm not capable, and I've never cheated in an over-the-board game. But so, we only so have your word. Make... All right. So that was another good denial, right? He's done it multiple times now. I've never cheated in an over-board over-the-board game, and by the rules of statement analysis, I accept him at his word. Right. So that exonerates him from that, but also the phrasing of that, like I said multiple times now, the fact that it's deliberately leaving out online non over the board games and he has a history of cheating in online non over the board games is deliberate and makes me suspicious that he, he continues to cheat on chess.com word for that you accept clear. that right we have your word for my that. word it's unequivocal chess.com themselves said that right it is an unequivocal statistical fact that mm. i have never cheated in an over the board game and that is something you cannot debate elon Musk that was is a full-throated great denial Right. So sometimes people get loud and, and passionate, but they don't actually give the denial. Right. He got passionate, but actually he gave us what we wanted. He, he added the red meat, which is the actual denial. So he did it multiple times. He did it unequivocally. So um, so great examples of real denials from him. As you know, or tweeted. at least reliable denials. Uh, on what was known as Twitter then is now X. Talent hits a target. And by reliable denial, I mean, if I'm betting, I'm 90% going all in that he did not cheat on his in his match with um, Magnus Carlsen. By the same token, I'm going all in on the fact that he has cheated and continues to cheat on chess.com because he did not give a reliable denial of that. No one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one can see because it's in your butt. What did you feel when you read that? Well, uh, I was a bit surprised. Um, you know, uh, I, I was surprised. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really think much of it. You know, I, I focus on competing and um, I don't let these things affect me. And uh, my goal is to become the best chess player in the world and, and, and to give back to chess players all around the world. And... Uh, I think that chess is a beautiful game that should be spread, and that's why I intend to do a lot more charity work. Also, that scholarship and charity work makes more sense now, right? That he has cheated in the past. So he does have – so his for, his virtue signaling, right, his scholarship and charity to chess does reflect something in his past where he, you know, he has cheated, he admitted to cheating, and probably continues to cheat, right? So mm -hmm. the charity, the virtue signaling makes sense and give back to the communities who, who helped me. Do you think when you play Magnus Carlsen again, you'll kick his butt, for want of a better phrase? You know, I'll just let my chest speak for itself. Hans Neiman uh, and Terence, your lawyer. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Good interview. So lots of stuff covered there. The Hans Neiman saga is not over. And now you've seen firsthand that I can change my opinion on people as long as the words justify it. Hans gave a great denial multiple times. 
full-throated about his match with Magnus Carlsen, and I believe him. And if they do a, re- a rematch, I will be rooting for Hans because um, if he wins there, it will support my theory. Um, it will support the statement analysis that we've done here. By the same token, he did not deny cheating on chess.com. Um, and he did not deny – it's not like he said, you know, I cheat on chess.com in the past, but I, ha- I haven't cheated there since, right? Because it's proven that he's cheated there twice. He left it totally open, which makes me think that he may st- continue cheating there, um, that he is cheating there currently, or he did so recently or outside of those two times that he admitted to, or he may plan on cheating there in the future if he needs to. Um, All right, so we still have other storylines to follow, so we'll follow up on those predictions. Until next time, stay true.